In our previous video, we took a look at the method of undetermined coefficients to find the coefficient solutions to the particular solution of some linear, not homogeneous differential equation. The problem is that method only works with those nice examples that we talked about in those videos. And while they are more common, there are some times where we have other things that the differential equation equals that are not as nice, like tangent where we can't just guess what the form of the pretty particular solution is going to be. So the question then becomes, how do we solve non-homogeneous equations that are not so nice. Well, the simple answer to this question is we're going to use a method that's called variation of parameters. And before we get into a variation of parameters, I want to review something from linear algebra, or for those of you that have not taken linear algebra yet, introduce something called Kramer's rule. And Kramer's rule is a nice slick trick to solve a system of equations using determinants, and it works for any number of variables. We're just going to look at it with two variables. So if we have ax plus by equals c, and another equation dx plus ey equals f, we can make this thing called the coefficient matrix. which is just the coefficients of the variables a, b, d, and e. And then if I want to solve for what the x equals, it's going to actually be a fraction where the determinant of the coefficient matrix goes in the denominator, a, b, d, e. And in the numerator, if we're solving for the first variable, we replace the first column with the solutions, c and f. The second column still remains the same. And if I want to solve for the second variable, again, the denominator is the coefficient matrix. And in the numerator, when we're solving for the second variable, we replace the second column with the solutions C and F, keeping the first columns exactly the same. Well, we've already talked about how to solve a 2 by 2 determinants. We multiply the diagonal CE and subtract the BF. And then we'd have AD minus BD, or AE, sorry, minus BD. And that would be the solution for X. And to find the solution for Y, it would be AF minus CD over AE minus BD. And that'll work for every system of equations. Let's try it really briefly with an example. Let's say I wanted to solve 3x minus 2y equals negative 1 and 5x minus y equals 3. Well, x is going to be equal to the fraction where I put the coefficient matrix 3, negative 2, 5, negative 1 in the denominator. In the numerator, since x is the first variable, I'll replace the first column with negative 1, 3, keeping the second column negative 2, negative 1. Evaluating that, the numerator is negative 1 times 1 is 1, minus negative 6 makes it plus 6. The numerator is negative 3 minus, uh, minus 10, which makes it a plus 10. So we end up with 7 over 7, which is equal to 1. So x is equal to 1. Similarly with y, we put the coefficient determinant in the denominator, 3, negative 2, 5, negative 1. And in the numerator, since y is the second variable, we replace the second column with the solutions of negative 1 and 3, keeping the first columns the same, 3 and 5. 
And then we multiply the diagonals to get 9 minus negative 5 plus 5, negative 3 minus negative 10 plus 10, and we get 14 over 7, which is equal to 2. And so we've got the solution x comma y is equal to 1 comma 2. And this Kramer's rule method will work no matter how complex or simple the system of equations is. It's really nice. Well, we're going to use Kramer's rule in this method called the variation of parameters. Here's the process we're going to go through to solve these. First thing we're going to do is identify y sub c, or y complement. And we already know that's going to be some constant times the first function y plus some constant times a second linearly independent function y. Then we're going to make a claim. We might not know what y particular looks like, but we're going to claim that y particular is some function u times that same y1 plus another function u2 times that same function y2. Again, I'm saying where u1 and u2 are functions, not constants. They're functions. Well, if that's the case, we are going to use Kramer's rule to find u1 prime and u2 prime using a systems of equations that this will create. Now, I'm not going to take the time in this video to show where the system of equations comes from. Instead, underneath this video, I'm going to link to a video that's made by a former math instructor at Big Ben, Bryn Harberts, who works through the calculus to show how this claim that we made in B results in a system of equations. That system of equations is u1 prime y1 plus u2 prime y2 equals 0, and u1 prime y1 prime plus u2 prime y2 prime is equal to whatever function the equation the differential equation was equal to, that ugly thing that we couldn't use variation of parameters on. Now, I mentioned this is a system of equations. We know what y1 is because y1 is the function from the complementary solution. So really our unknowns are u1 and u2. So using Kramer's rule, u1 prime is equal to we can stick the coefficients in the denominator, y1 and y2, and their derivatives, y1 prime, y2 prime. Notice that's the Ronskian. Then in the numerator, looking for u1, the first variable, we'll replace the first column with the solutions 0 and f of x, and the second column will stay y2 and y2 prime. Similarly, u2 prime has the Ronskian in the denominator, y1, y2, and y1 prime, y2 prime. But this time we're going to replace, for the second variable, the second column with 0f of x, keeping the first column exactly the same. So in other words, we're going to set up Kramer's rule to find the derivatives of the functions u1 and u2 that we want. Which means if we have the derivatives, we just have to integrate to find u1 and u2 to plug into the y particular function. So let's do one example where we can watch this works out.
let's do y prime prime plus y equals the tangent of x. There's no pretty form of tangent of x that we can use with variation of parameters because it's not a sine or cosine or exponential or a polynomial. So first we're going to find y complement which is going to be based on d squared plus 1 equals 0. So d is equal to plus or minus i. So y complement is equal to c1 cosine of x plus c2 sine of x. y particular then we're going to assume is some function times the cosine of x plus another function times the sine of x. We're looking for those functions u1 and u2. And we're going to do these one at a time. So first we'll look at u1 prime. In the denominator we'll put the functions y1 and y2 that we had from our complementary solution, cosine x and sine x, with derivatives negative sine x and cosine x. Since we're solving for the first variable, u1, we'll put the 0 and the f of x, which is what the differential equation equals, tangent x in the first column and we'll keep the second column exactly the same. So what's that going to give us? Well in the numerator 0 times cosine is 0 and so we're left with sine x tangent x minus because we subtract with the other diagonal divided by cosine squared x minus negative sine squared x, which is positive sine squared x. And we like cosine squared plus sine squared. That's 1. So we have negative sine x tangent x, which is really interesting because tangent we know is sine over cosine. So I'm going to write this as negative sine squared x over cosine x. And to make this easier, I'm going to keep playing with this because ultimately we're going to have to integrate because we don't want u prime, we want u. To make this easier to work with, I'm going to write negative sine squared as negative 1 plus cosine squared over cosine x. And then when I distribute the divide by cosine through, we end up with negative secant x plus cosine x. Well remember that's u prime, so to figure out what u is, u is the integral of negative secant x plus cosine x dx, the antiderivative. If you remember from calculus, actually u is equal to that, you might remember from calculus, or if you don't, you can look it up in the calculus table. The derivative of secant is the natural log of secant x plus tangent x. And we've got a negative out front plus the antiderivative of cosine is sine x. So we have found the function u sub 1. We still need to find the function u sub 2 though. So I'm going to scroll down here. And we're going to find u sub 2. Now it's off my screen, but I hope it's on your notes. We use the same denominator, which was cosine x sine x, and its derivatives, negative sine x cosine x. 
And in the numerator, since we're finding the derivative of u2, or the second column, we'll replace that with the 0 f of x, which in our case is tangent, keeping the first column the same, cosine x and negative sine x. And let's look at what that equals. Well, now we have cosine x tangent x minus 0 over, we already know the denominator is cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. It's the same denominator as before. But this time, the trig simplifies nicer because cosine times tangent, which is sine x over cosine x, cosines divide out, and we're just left with the sine of x. So u2 prime is equal to the sine of x. u2 is the antiderivative of sine x dx. u2 is just equal to the cosine of x. Actually, the negative cosine of x. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So we've got two functions here. We've got u1 and u2. And we also know that y particular is u1 cosine x plus u2 sine x. I'm going to copy all that information on one screen here. You probably already have it on your notes. But what we said was that y particular is equal to u1 cosine x plus u2 sine x. And using Kramer's rule and this method of variation of parameters, we found out that u1 is equal to negative natural log of x. Oops, sorry, the natural log of secant x plus tangent x plus the sine of x. We also found out that u2 is equal to the negative cosine of x. We also found out up above that y complement was equal to c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. So this kind of summarizes everything for me on one screen. We need to clearly define y particular, which is u1, u1 is the negative natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent x plus the sine of x, all of that times cosine x, plus u2, which is negative cosine x, times sine x. And we can actually do a little bit of cleanup here by distributing the cosine x through. Gives us negative cosine x natural log of secant x plus tangent x. And then if you notice what happens, we have a sine cosine minus sine cosine is 0. So now we've got our particular solution. Notice we probably never would have guessed this using a undetermined coefficients method. This variation of parameters method works for any function. To find y particular, we set up that y particular is equal to the u1 and u2 from the y complement, and then use Kramer's rule to get the derivatives, integrate to get the u's, and then we can build the actual particular solution. It's a little more work to get there, but it's not unbearable. Let's finish this off by saying the final general solution for y is the complement c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x plus the particular solution, which is negative cosine x natural log of the secant of x plus the tangent of x. 
What's nice about the process of variation of parameters is there's really no exceptions. Every problem works exactly the same. So it's your turn to go and practice some of these out of the homework. We'll see you in class to answer any questions that you may have.